Hi right, guys, it's me Daniel with VintageMagic.com. Welcome back to the sorting of this Alpha Collection and Arabian Nights cards that I got from our friend John locally. Uh, what's really interesting is I finally, this list that I had earlier of cards that he sorted, uh, the cards that he needs, uh, I counted them all up and I think if, as of 90, 90, 1999 he needed about 84 two cards so it's not quite a complete set but I think there's he probably fulfilled some of that so we're gonna figure it out but anyway we'll do the Arabian Lights set later but we'll do the Alpha first so uh, the Lotus is already in this little sleeve and yeah I I've already looked at the Lotus when I purchased the card but generally what I'm looking for here is you know, playware, inking, um, it's definitely not inked. I definitely feel like there's um, some of the, I feel like there's some playware on it for sure. It's light. I, I mean, I, I feel like this would grade an eight for PS or for Beckett, just because I know they're grading quality. Eights, you know, to some of you guys would be like, well, that's near mint to mint, but that's not necessarily the case and how it works because there's centering, corners, edges, and surface. Surface is actually pretty good other than the playware, but so the problem with Beckett is they sometimes, it depends on the greater two subjectivity. What do they give the surface of the card? Um, and you know, like, or is it an edge wear? Um, that's the problem. So they either deem one or the other. That makes sense. All right, so we'll just start sorting the cards. Um, and I'm just gonna put my land and everything, if that makes sense. Land, artifacts, and everything. Yeah, so typically what I do here is there's no, like, I don't know, there's this, there's no like strategy other than just making sure the cards are well protected. Uh, if I do find one that's, you know, a spectacular condition like this, Balance here is pretty clean. So, like for example, what I'll do is I'll put this out for grading quality. And I'm looking for probably nines and higher at this point. Uh, the eights, uh, the eights, eight fives, borderline cards, I'd probably be more interested in selling them as ungraded. Primarily because I don't see a value in not only spending the fee, grading fee, but um, it's just, it just it doesn't sell as well when it's graded, uh, when it's lower grade. And people actually, when they buy them, they will actually um, go off and uh, crack them out if they are just more playable. So there's actually no value whatsoever. Probably one of the greatest misconceptions of magic cards is people feel like, oh, if it's graded, it has to be worth a shitload of money. And that's definitely not the case. That's not how it works. So I'm basically doing some basic stuff here. So anyway, um, this particular collection had a nice assortment of cards overall. I thought it was um, just that, you know, the guy was a really nice guy too. And there was some uh, personal stuff he had going on, but I feel like it was, you know, a fair type of arrangement. Um, this type, these type of cards also will take quite a bit longer to sell if you were to maximize as a retailer situation. So keep that in mind. People often think, oh, just because they are alpha or, you know, just expensive cards that they're just gonna fly off the shelves and that's not how it works. Usually how it works is that if the cards are less expensive and they're more playable, like kind of standard cards, there's more high frequency, there's more uh, demand, then they will probably sell faster uh, off the shelf than the older cards. Um, and that's how it works. Uh, there's no way you can go around it. Um, that's how the market works. now. Some of you would be like, well, okay, fine. You can just sit on them forever, Dan, and you just never sell anything if you don't want. Uh, sure, that's possible, but that's not how you stay in business. Okay, this is interesting. Um, this crusade, 
Crusade is probably one of the most difficult cards. It's like a Birds of Paradise where the left is really small, uh, big or big, and then the right is very small. But this Crusade actually is pretty even. Like if I was to grade the centering, it may just get a 9-5 centering, which is absurdly difficult. Now the card is played, has some play wear, but it has it also has some print dots that occur on the card. But the centering on this in particular is spectacularly nice. So uh, keep that in mind, like there are cards where, um, you know, the centering makes a huge, huge difference. And if you get a quality version, there will be premiums for that card, um, you know, like it or not. So these, I don't know, this farm set's close. Just put it there for later. So yeah, basically what I'm doing is I'm pulling out like nine quality cards first or above. There isn't that many, in my opinion, in just a quick glance. Now, again, this is quick glance, and this is being me very, very quick and um, be you know kind of kind of just doing that initial impression right of something. Um, the steps again were I took the card collection out and I put it. I unsleeved them from their binder pages. I took it out of the binder first and I sleeved them. So that allowed me then to um, put them, you know, kind of in a raw pile. So they're going to be mixed up. But do you see how now I can just sit down, take it easy, and really look at the condition and observe what I think um, just kind of in a slower pace, but to my you know, to a pace where I can kind of make sense on what's gradable, what's not. So that's important to understand. Now, I will say collections that will are a little bit more. Let's say let's say all the cards are really high quality. Let's let's make that a, let's make that a, um, like uh, opinion. Oh, by the way, this Iron Tree Tree Folk. Every freaking card has that print dot on that top right, just about. Crazy, huh? Crazy. Um, yeah, so I always, you know, what I do is, you know, I want to make sure that when you're buying something, you want to look at condition very carefully. Um, and you want to make sure that you're, you know, you're getting a value where you know that you can protect yourself. I think a lot of people, when they buy stuff, they sometimes either give the grades way too low or they give them way too high. And there needs to be an ability from the person buying. If you, if you, let's say you're a card store and you are, um, have buyers, you need to train them on what to look for for older cards, especially if you are in the market for buying older cards. I say this because there's a lot of problems with buyers these days and they don't know what to look for which makes it really bad because you end up buying not only fakes, but the qualities are really bad. So um, I'd be very careful uh, if you are a, a card store, that is something to look at. This underground C here is very, it's, it's not bad, but it's, I mean, the surface is clean, but the edges a little bit play. Um, this gentleman, and now, another thing about underground C, by the way, is almost every single one that I've ever seen has two little white dots like on the black border right there. Very distinctive of the alpha. Um, but another thing this guy, what this guy told me was for his alpha, because he started in the dark. So uh, basically what happened was he purchased them uh, from eBay back in the day. So uh, this is incredible because back in the day, I mean, obviously this stuff was dirt cheap, but he would just fight for it on eBay. And you're probably wondering to yourself, why in the world did he just not buy everything? Why did this gentleman not have unlimited money? Apparently it's cheap compared to before. Why didn't he just buy everything? And the main reason why guys is because like I was said in the video with him, in the video I met with him, it it's um, actually back in the day prices they were expensive relative to the time that you were in, the era you're at. So just because they are, um, you know, I guess a fair, I mean, dirt cheap, obviously, compared to today, you have to keep in mind, everyone, that 
the prices were very, 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 very um, different in terms of relativity. It's like so, a gallon, like a gas of uh, a gallon of gas back in the day was like maybe not even two bucks. Let's say right, not even maybe a buck ten. You know, something like that. A buck ten versus three to four dollars now. Now you're probably saying, well, who cares, guy Dan? This is just gas, and gas is gas, but. Uh, you know, gas is a cost of living. Gas is part of your living expense. So if you don't account for it, you're going to get, you know, it all adds up, you know. And then we talk about magic cards, you know, let's say $100 for a box of beta or back then it was a little bit more because he wasn't playing right in the beginning of beta. So I think some of the scries had beta boxes at like $1,000, $1,000. So Think about that, $1,000, that's pretty, pretty uh, expensive, you know, I think. Yeah, I mean, $1,000 is a lot, um, you know, especially if you didn't buy in the very beginning. Now, obviously, in the very beginning, it would have been more affordable, but you, again, these things sold out so fast, there was, there was no way for you to actually ever buy them, um, unless from, you know, they were sold out, then collectors had them you had to buy them from them and they marked them up a little bit so all right so that is the end of the alpha actual color sorting <clears throat> so what i'm going to do here i'm going to do some quick math on what we have here let's take a look so we have one two three four five six seven eight eleven twelve thirty forty fifty sixteen seventy eight eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight twenty nine thirty thirty one thirty two thirty three thirty four thirty five thirty six thirty six thirty five thirty six 36 cards there. 37, 38, 39, 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 50. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 60. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 70. 1, 2, 3, 73. Okay. 73. And 1, 3, 4, 7, 5, 7, 6, 7, 7, 7, 8, 7, 9, 80. 88. There's a total of one, five tool lands, 88. Okay. You guys will probably be bored out of your mind. 88, 1, 2, 90. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 100. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Hundred and twenty. Twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Hundred forty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Seventeen. Plus hundred forty. Hundred forty is hundred fifty. 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 Two, three, sixty, one, sixty, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, seventy, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, eighty, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, ninety, one, two, three, four, five, one, ninety, five, one, ninety, five. 200, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 210, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 220, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 230, 231. So actually, I have six uh, dual lands. All right, so that is basically it, guys. Uh, we have uh, 230. Oh, God. Anyway, go back in the comments below and crush me, but. Uh, the alpha set has 295 cards. Is that correct, guys? Yeah, I want to say 295. That's my, uh, yeah, I've seen so many alpha sets, I just don't remember. But not 292. I always think it's 292, but it's 295. And I believe the beta has 307. There's 12 different cards, yeah. All right, so there you go, guys. This is the alpha part of it. I'm going to then... Uh, the Arabian Nights, oh, you know what? I might as well just go through this because I have a few more minutes. Arabian Nights is more about just going through like quality and condition. 
If you guys notice something very carefully, I didn't really pull out much cards to grade. Um, it was like four, and that I would get nine or nine five quality from quick glance. I mean, I did see a few that are more borderline. And this Arabian Nights set is definitely better than the Alpha set. Um, I feel like the I feel like this library is not bad actually. Um, yeah, this library is a nine or a nine five. Uh, I don't know, probably a nine. It has a little thing on the edge, but the Jazam is a nine. The Arabians are not not as bad. I mean, some of them are a little bit play like this Guardian Beast is really played now that's hp that's mp to some people but that's hp hp to mp to rudy that's mint condition for rudy you know what i mean uh drop of honey is sign it's a little bit where but yeah those two cards are solid bazaar is like a yeah like an eight yeah, so the other cards, there might be some commons and uncommons here that I could probably pull out and grade, but I honestly don't care that much because ultimately I have so many, so much other inventory and I have to sleeve these up, then put them on the, the eBay store or my website. So what I do next is basically I take this, these little lo loaders, I'll be very careful, I take about half the cards and I put them very carefully in there. Make sure that they're all nice and tight. Eventually, you'll want to put some toilet paper or something just to make sure it uh, doesn't move around with no movement. So you don't want any shaking, okay? So I'm not going to shake it. And then lastly, what I do, a lot of people ask me, well, how do you store your cards? And I'm going to cut the video here, guys. Um, it's basically, I have these bins. I have these bins you can buy at Costco. And I basically will um, put the, the cards in there with the plastic. And they're good because they protect from moisture, they have a temperature controlled system, and then they'll either, you know, be, you know, they'll be listed and such on my store and stored carefully. All right, guys, take care. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.